Good morning, everyone. This is Suzanne at the State Library. I'm here this morning with Lauren Patton, and our topic today for our webinar is World War I, the Centennial, and getting involved. I want to let you guys know if anyone has any issues with sound, we currently are not exp experiencing any global sound issues. But if you do have any issues with sound during the webinar, refer to the pod below your chat box where the audio setup wizard is. Um, that's really the best resource for you as far as getting your audio figured out. If we are experiencing a global sound issue, we will type that in the chat box so everybody knows. So I'm very excited to be here today with Lauren. We're gonna go ahead and get her PowerPoint ready to share with everybody and then we'll get started. And I just want to remind everyone that this webinar is actually a part of a series of webinars that we're doing with Indiana State Library staff. We have lots of librarians that work here who are all a wealth of information, and I'm really excited that I coerced them all into doing webinars for us all. So thank you so much, Lauren, and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, are we ready? Yep. Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the World War I Centennial Getting Involved. As you already know, this year is the official centennial start date for the United States being involved in World War I. Hi, this is me. I am a Rare Books and Manuscripts librarian at the Indiana State Library and also a member of the Indiana World War I Centennial Committee. This is all of my contact information as well as the contact information for the State Library and the slide is repeated at the end as well. Okay, so we'll get started here. Um, the purpose of this webinar is to inform people about resources and events in Indiana and nationally, as well as instruct institutions and citizens in ways that they can become involved in the centennial. Um, some ways to get involved from a library slash local history perspective that I'm going to cover are reading, researching, hosting or attending an event, hosting or visiting an exhibit, and advocating for World War I history in your community by identifying memorials and potential markers. So here's why the World War I um, centennial is important. Um, it was marked by bloodshed and destruction, the likes of which the Western world had never before seen. There were a lot of firsts and standouts about the war, like modern weaponry and chemical warfare, and it was the largest amount of casualties that people had seen in quite a long time. Um, it was also cited as a cause for World War II, potentially. I won't go into that today. <laughs> um, but it did not have the cut and dry patriotism of World War II, um, which is why it's, I guess, not a period of conflict that's as widely covered as that war. So, as I said, one of the things I'm going to cover is reading about World War I. This is kind of a more, I guess, a more passive thing if someone maybe doesn't have a whole lot of time or if you don't have a whole lot of resources at your library particularly. Um, you can create a centennial reading list based on materials available at your library. And I included some sample reading lists to go over. Um, obviously, over in Europe, they've been on the World War I Centennial for quite a while, so they had a lot of resources available. And Lauren, I just want to interrupt and make sure people know that we will share your slides after the webinar. Yeah. Yeah, that way they all have all of this. Yes, you don't have to frantically take notes right now. Um, a book display of recommended titles on World War I can also serve as an exhibit. And I just encourage everybody to create your own, own bibliography based on your collections. You can blog about or share with people curious about the Great War. Um, likely there's gonna be increased traffic for this topic due to the centennial over the next couple of years. Next slide is about research. Um, of course, I have to mention the resources we have here at the Indiana State Library. We have over 40 manuscripts collections with World War I materials, which you can search show you our finding aid index in case you have not seen it. So you can type in, you know, any number of search terms here. I guess I'll just do an example since I'm here. 
And there you go. They come up right like that. Um, obviously, lots of local history and a huge um, genealogy collection. Another thing you can do is connect with your county historical societies and other public libraries to expand on resources that they all have there and band together. Um, Professor Bert Chapman at Purdue University put together this wonderful research guide dealing with military and government resources from multiple countries on World War I. Some of these resources, um, particularly the journal articles and newspapers, will only be available to Purdue students, but he noted that most of these resources were free to the general public. So that is an excellent, excellent resource. Thank you, Professor Chapman. Okay. Whoop. Sorry. Um, another resource we have is the U.S. World War I Centennial Commission page. They have a thing about tracing your family history in terms of World War I. Just, just going to these websites, you can kind of see what they all look like and have a frame of reference. But the United States World War I Centennial Commission has a really great website with a lot of things going on. Is this a good place for people to start kind of getting immersed in this? Yeah, I would okay. say so, definitely. Um, this is just their genealogical resources. So they have, go to their homepage so you can see what that looks like too. It looks like they have a ton of resources on here. Yes, they definitely do. Okay, where was I? Sorry. You're okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, also, in terms of researching, if you know you don't have, if you have people who aren't going to get out to Indianapolis but want to see what we have at the state library, we have our digital collections. This is our digital collections homepage, where you can search specific things all over the library. Most of the library's World War I photographs are already digitized and available on the Digital Collections website. Um, and more World War I documents and artifacts are being digitized throughout the centennial. We're especially working on that. And there is a, there's going to be a homepage specifically for World War I. Here's some of the things that we can see there. Lieutenant Schoen was a flying ace from Indianapolis. It's the news clipping from his collection. It's so fascinating to see all of these documents from that time. Yeah, if people are interested, they don't even have to leave the library or, or their house, really. And also, there's one other thing I wanted to highlight on here. We searched um, Samuel Woodfill earlier in the finding aids. He was uh, the most decorated World War I soldier who was also from Indiana, or well, born in Indiana. Um, this is a letter he wrote to a congressperson when he was living in Kentucky. So again, we're going to have a lot more of these resources going up on the digital collections page so you can research from the library or from home. So that letter that you just showed us, is that something that the Indiana State Library owns? Yes. So we actually have that actual letter. Yes. That's pretty great. But through dig digitization, of course, we can then share it with everyone else. Yes. Hooray. And that handwriting was amazing. Yeah, he had very nice handwriting. <laughs> OK. So one of the other things I mentioned that's a more active way to get involved is creating or hosting an exhibit at your institution. And like I said, if you're a library and you're just, you know, maybe making a reading list, you can do a book display or you can kind of go to the next level and put together more resources or you can contact the World War I Centennial Committee, us in Indiana, and we can help you with that. Um, some exhibits and memorials that I already know of that are happening around the state are listed here. A lot of them um, are in Indianapolis, but we also have Vincennes. There's going to be one in Johnson County. Um, there's going to be, 
on the upcoming World War I Centennial website for the state of Indiana. There's going to be a more comprehensive list of World War I related exhibits happening across the state. Um, also for the month of April, if you have people coming to visit the State House, we're going to have an exhibit in the rotunda there too. So pretty much everyone is, is getting involved in some way. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be extensive. You can kind of make it what you, whatever you want it to be. Um, and again, for there's going to be things happening nationally as well as online. Um, the National World War I Museum in Kansas City is a huge resource for people who are really getting involved. Um, that is available pretty much 24 seven to you. They're always talking about World War I. Uh, there's going to be things in the, in Washington DC in the Capitol and people are also having online exhibits like this one I linked to in the Cincinnati Museum Center. And if you are, if your institution is interested in planning an exhibit or an event or you are already planning one that maybe wasn't listed here, you haven't been contacted by anyone about sharing that event across the state of Indiana, please do contact the um, Indiana World War I Centennial Committee and we will add that to our website. Can we take a look at that website at all? Do you have that? I am getting, there you that go. is the next slide. The next slide, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> the website has not officially launched yet. Okay. It will be live as of Thursday, but that is the URL for it. So it's www.1cc.org. Slash Indiana. Indiana. Yeah, it's okay. sponsored through the National World War One Committee, Centennial Committee website. Um, and there will be a lot of resources available as of Thursday. As of Thursday. <laughs> That's exciting. We're getting a jump on it. In the everybody. meantime, we do have our Facebook page, which you can follow for regular content about resources, events throughout the state. We can help share your event through there. Um, and if you forget the, the website URL or can't find your slides for some reason, I'm sure we'll be sharing it there as well. And that is our email. Like I said, if you are already planning an exhibit, an event in your county, in your city, and you want to share that, or if you need help planning, you know, need ideas for something, we can certainly help you with that. For the World War I committee, will, um, once the website is live, of course, will there be a way to find contacts for individual counties or, um, I'm assuming it's not like the Bicentennial Commission where there was like a commissioner in every single county? Not, yeah, not that I know of. If, you know, if you are, in, if someone is interested in being a contact person for their county, by all means, let us know. But um, I think we're just going to have what I know of right now is that we'll have the um, historical societies or museums that are hosting events or hosting exhibits. We'll have that information available. Okay. Um, but you can also probably connect with people on the Facebook page. We've already had you know people commenting on events saying we're doing this, and I've already contacted people through through that, like in Carroll County. Great. Okay, this is our centennial kickoff event on April 6th, which is the official declaration date that the United States declared war. Um, the governor will be there, lots of other guests, Salvation Army will be there in period uniforms, which is really exciting. Um, but here's all the information about that, and again, that will be on the Facebook page and the website. Other centennial events that I know of right now, um, the national kickoff event at the World War I Museum and Memorial in Kansas City, will be. this will be broadcast online, so will the event in Indianapolis. That's another easy way to get involved if you have a public library, if you have people in the community that are interested in, in seeing this, you can stream it from the library. Um, like I said, I connected with Carroll County earlier. They're having an event 
the World War I Remembrance on the Courthouse Lawn um, at 11 a.m. there. In November, there's going to be a graveside memorial for James Bethel Gresham at Locust Hill Cemetery in Evansville. Um, I believe the mayor of Evansville is going to be there. He was the first casualty after the United States got involved in World War I, so that's why he is significant. In Indiana or in the whole shebang? He, the first United States casualty in World War I who was from Indiana. Okay, gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. And there is a concurrent event happening in Indianapolis on the same date. Wow. And I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping um, pending interest that in 2018, I can do another one of these sharing the events for that year. I'm not going to go into 2018 events right now because that's a little far out. But again, you can continue going to the website or the Facebook page to find out information about that. Okay. And now I'm at the memorials and historical markers portion. Um, one thing that's happening nationally is 100 Cities, 100 Memorials. It's a project to restore World War I memorials around the United States. They are awarding 100 matching grants of up to $2,000. That information is available on that National World War I Committee website that we saw. If you want to learn more about that, if you've identified something in your community, um, the World War I Memorial Inventory is a project to identify and create an online inventory of World War I memorials in the U.S. Indiana wants an inventory of its own. That is something the Indiana World War I Centennial Committee is interested in, if you know of a memorial in your community. I also have Casey here from the Indiana Historical Bureau, who's going to talk more about the Indiana Historical Markers program. And I'm going to pass things off to her. She is the expert about that. Right. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I want to thank Lauren and Suzanne for uh, allowing me to be here today to talk a little bit about the State Historical Marker Program um, and another way to kind of get involved in the World War I centennial. Um, our agency, the Indiana Historical Bureau, um, we are responsible for overseeing the state marker program, and um, we've been working with communities across Indiana going back to the 1940s on the installation of new state markers. To date, we've installed over 620, and you can find them standing in 88 of our 92 counties. Uh, there's a great variety of topics, but unfortunately, we don't have too many that look at World War I topics. We have a couple that kind of tangentially touch on the war. Um, one would be the uh, marker that is featured in uh, the PowerPoint for this webinar for the Allison Machine Shop that kind of talks about how the machine shop shut down production during the war and kind of switched um, their processes so that they were producing things that were just for the war effort. Um, so if you guys do have ideas on topics that you'd like to see commemorated, whether it's a person, a specific place, an event, an organization that had a large impact during the war, um, we would definitely encourage you to consider applying. Um, the application deadline, it's a perfect time right now because we're in the middle of an application process, and that deadline is June 23rd, as stated here. Um, we have a link to the application, um, which if you click here. Um, this page kind of goes through the process for applying, and it includes the links, both a Word document and PDF, whichever is easiest for you guys to fill out and complete. Um, and then the page itself just kind of goes through the process of, you know, deadlines and everything, um, when you would be notified if that marker were approved. Um, we also have, and going back, our marker guidelines, um, which kind of goes through the process of some of the things we look for. Um, one of the big things is primary source documentation. So this would be sources from the time period, from World War I, that would support the points that you would want to make on the marker. Um, and if people are having a difficult time finding primary resources to support their research, that's something that the State Library can certainly help them with, yeah. right? Yeah. And then do you ever refer people to other organizations as well for that? We do, definitely. We actually have a research um, checklist on our website, and it's also accessible through these um, marker application pages that lists collections at the Indiana State Library, the State Archives, 
Um, another project that uh, our agency works with in conjunction with the State Library is Hoosier State Chronicles, which is a free newspaper database that has, I mean, hundreds of thousands of newspaper pages um, that, again, are freely accessible to you for research, um, whether it's on World War I or other topics. It's a great resource. Um, we encourage you to check it out. Um, so that could be very beneficial as you're putting together a marker application. Um, the other thing that I would also say, and you know, if you're interested in our historical markers or seeing what we kind of have up, you can search our Find a Marker page, which you can search by county, by category. Um, if there's something that you're interested in, uh, there's a wide variety up there, as I said. Um, and the other page that I would encourage you to check out, this goes beyond the work that we do for state markers, but it's a page called hmdb.org. It's the historical marker database. And um, if you search that, you can search. Um, it's not comprehensive, but they provide a great resource of markers, memorials, other signage across um, not just the state, but the world um, that uh, you guys can search. You know, if you're interested, you can go by category. And they actually have a World War I category that kind of um, shows some of the memorials across um, the country, really, that you can search uh, if you want to go and visit some um, in the areas where you guys are either traveling or living. So I thank you so much for your time. I have just one question. Yeah. Um, is it correct that if like, I have a great idea for a historical marker and I get all the resources and everything, they're not free, correct. right? Can yes. you talk a little bit about yeah, that Yeah, of course. Process? So um, yes, applicants are responsible for funding for markers. The current price, which is listed on the documentation, is $2,500. Now you can work, we encourage you to work with whether it's local historical societies in your area, um, other you know, uh, volunteer organizations to try to help to defray some of that cost and um, get some funding from them, um, if at all possible. Um, so there is that cost. Um, and because it is an application process, not every topic is guaranteed to go through. It really depends on the number of marker applications that we receive every year. Um, we've been very fortunate in the past couple of years that we've seen a large uptick in interest. Um, this is due in large part to last year's bicentennial, and hopefully this year with the um, World War I centennial and just other events going on around the state, we'll continue to see that large increase. Um, but if you do have other questions, I encourage you, um, you can email me or email anyone at the State Library and they can get put you in contact with me as well. Casey, what's your email address? I'll put it in the sure. chat. Sure. It's cfeifer at p-f-e-i, f-f-e-r at history dot in dot gov. Does that look right? Perfect. Okay, good. All right. Does anybody have any questions right now? We can take a quick little break for questions for Casey and for Lauren. That was actually the um, the last portion of the PowerPoint was the piece about historical markers. Thank you, Casey, for being here to expand upon that. Um, here is my contact information again. And yeah, now we can open this up for questions. I wanted to ask, is um, is World War I considered to be the first modern war? Yes. It is. OK. Um, we also have a question in the chat box. Are there any experts out there that would be good to reach out to for programming that you know of? Not that I know of right now. The, the, the biggest resource that I've had in learning about the war are the people at Indiana War Memorials here in Indianapolis. Stuart Goodwin is the dir executive director of the Indiana War Memorial. Um, and he is also a member of, I can't remember his title in the World War I Centennial Committee. Sorry, sorry, General Goodwin. Can we go to the Indiana War Memorial website maybe? Yes. And we can direct people there. Mm -hmm. And keep the questions coming. We'd love to have a little bit more of a discussion about this before we send you all off. Or if anyone has other ideas they want to share with the group. Good, multiple attendees are typing. I do want to just throw out Downton Abbey. Um, I believe that that uh, show I love that covered show. World War I. So I don't know what the um, licensing would be if you were going to show Downton Abbey at your library, but you would want to look into that to, so that you showed it you know, legally, of course. Yes. And there's lots of other films that people could show as part of this World War I film. 
I honestly don't don't know, but that's something, you know, if you're creating like a, a book display or a bibliography based on the resources that you have available to you, that's definitely a good thing to research, research that I'm sure patrons would would want to know about. I'm sure you'll definitely see a surge in, in people using those resources. Um, this is the War Memorials contact page. Again, they're in Indianapolis. Oh, this is the contact for the foundation. I'm sorry. What's, what's the name of, or what's the website for that? I'll put Indiana that. War Memorials .org. Is that look good? Okay, we had a couple other questions. Is um, sorry, Chris. I think you're saying is service information available on people identified as World War One veterans? Are you trying, Chris, are you trying to find a database maybe about World War I veterans? Does it sound like that's what she's asking? I know that that's something that um, the archives and other members of the Indiana World War I Centennial Committee are, are working on putting together a more comprehensive resource from that. Those are materials, um, the Indiana State Digital Archives, those are materials that are available in genealogy as well, probably through national databases as well as state. That's a good idea to maybe look for geneal genealogy resources. Mm -hmm. Connie Bruder has a great idea. She says, is anyone thinking about a scanathon to encourage the public to bring in their personal World War I items? Because that sounds like a lot of fun. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, that would be great and definitely because we are encouraging that at the Indiana State Library. I don't know if there's a specific day that that's starting, um, but especially because those resources are kind of starting to disappear based on age, encouraging right. that in your local communities is a great idea. I mean, every time someone cleans out their house or the house of a loved one who has died, then a lot of those things kind of go by the wayside very often. So that's a great idea. Um, Ashley Stout has another idea. She says that the Indiana Historical Society might have some additional information about World War I. She's getting one of their traveling exhibits in November. Ashley, what's the topic of the traveling exhibit that you're getting? And then we've got Nancy's also typing. And Lauren, do you think you could go back to the National World War I Museum and we could take a look at some of the resources that they have on their website? Yes. This allows me, here we go. Okay. So there's kind of different sections here. Um, as you can see, educate, commemorate, honor, participate, communicate. Um, so I'm not sure if there, here. is there a specific one I should go if to? If you go under educate, let's see what's there. Oh, the educational resources where it says teach and learn about World War One. Thanks, Ashley. Ashley put the link in um, for the traveling exhibit that she's getting. It's called The Great War from Ration Lines to the Front Line. That sounds great, and I'm sure everyone's excited to have that, too. Okay, click for the Resource Center. Connie says a discussion group about a World War I book and maybe a movie would also be fun. That's true. That would be cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested, too, if anyone has any books that they've um, experienced that would be good. Nancy says they're doing a program. Sorry, I lost it. On April 6th, focusing on Adolf F. Mueller from the World War I collection. He kept two diaries during his service in France. At the end of the program, they're going to encourage participants to bring in photos and stories of their World War I ancestors to share in a future program and display. That's a wonderful idea to really get your local um, people involved. So here are the education resources that are highlighted on the National World War I Centennial page. Um, it looks like you can search by subject, grade level, and type, as well as keyword. Those are great. I love seeing lesson plans available on websites because a lesson plan is really easy to adapt into a program. So even if you're not a teacher, don't feel like, oh, it's a lesson plan. It's not really a program plan. 
you can adapt things um, from lesson plans into a program pretty easily. Dana has another great idea. She says that their local VFW has scrapbooks with articles on local service members and a program from them about the local community, local history would be great. And I don't know, is the State Library, would those kinds of things be things that would be interesting to digitize? Those kinds of scrapbooks that VFW members have kept? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so that would be a really interesting idea too. Another idea that um, you touched on a little bit during your presentation was the idea of public libraries and local communities working together. And you know, at the State Library, we certainly know that um, in many, many Indiana counties, there's more than one public library. So it would be really interesting if local libraries, um, you know, got together and did a joint uh, exhibit for World War One. Maybe you could do a traveling exhibit within your county, where you all pool your resources, and then it can travel throughout the different um, counties, the different library systems in your county. That would be really interesting. Let's see here. Are there any websites that we touched on that anybody wants to see more in depth? And are there any other questions for Lauren or for Casey? I also want to mention that Bethany is in the room today and she's our manuscripts librarian. She's mad that I said that. <laughs> you have any questions for Bethany? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Another uh, come resource. On, come on over. Sure. Another resource that I would recommend you guys um, look at. I know with World War One, um, because United States involvement was you know shorter. It was only the two years, um, but still so much happened. One of the things um, that is so important, you know, is what was going on on the home front um, during this time. Um, and one of the collections that I've looked at at the Indiana State Archives looks at the Indiana State Council of Defense. Um, and dur during World War One, most of the states in the country had their own state council of defense. The collection at the state archives is massive. It's broken down into various sections. Um, there were sections for food, there were sections for education, for women, um, a variety of topics. So it is a, a great resource if you're looking for um, different ways to do research into World War I. Um, there's great opportunities there. There's also a wonderful book called Over Here um, that looks at American society during World War I. Um, again, a home front thing um, by David Kennedy um, that was a seminal work in the 1980s. I know he republished a copy uh, more recently than that, but it's a, a great research tool as well. Great. Thanks, Casey. And I also want to draw everyone's attention to Sam in the chat box. Hi, um, Sam. Do you know Sam? Yeah. Yay. Mm -hmm. So he says that he's the director of, the, of communications for Indiana Archives and Records Administration. He's helping Indiana World War I Centennial Committee with its communications efforts and the website design. And this is the part that's really exciting for public libraries. Um, the committee will be endorsing projects, events, and programs related to Indiana's involvement in World War I. And he says the endorsement project process is going to be very easy. and will be on their website, which he lists there, and then he encourages all um, public libraries to submit pro um, projects to be endorsed. So that's exciting. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Deborah says, can we get a copy of the chat feed? Absolutely, I'll be sure to grab that. Uh, that way we have all the answers to these great questions. Okay. <clears throat> well, everybody, I know this webinar was kind of short and sweet today, but I think there was lots of ideas of things to do with World War I. Um, you know, a quick, a quick thing to do would be to put a book list together for your patrons, also displays on the materials that you have at your library. It would be really interesting to do a call out to see what kinds of resources are available in your community. If people have uh, private collections in their homes that they would be interested in sharing. Also, we've talked about the idea of doing um, scanathons for digi digi digitization, which is always a fun word to say, in your libraries, and also um, movies and um, TV shows and book clubs, all those kinds of things. Um, does anyone have anything to add, either in the room or in the chat box? One more great idea, printing out large copies of some of the amazing old letters or maps would be really cool to look at. That's true. Um, every once in a while, we're able to print large scale um, pieces based on 
you know, these older things that we have, and it's really, really cool to see those. That's That would be a, a great backdrop for a display as well. Oh, yes, Library of Congress. I don't know what their collections look like for World War II. Do you guys, or World War I? Sorry, I did it. <laughs> Someone was going to. I'm glad it was me. Um, but yes, I'm sure the Library of Congress has great resources for this as well. Oh, yes, and look, there it is. They have an annotated bibliography that is yes. included in your slides here. today. That's okay. We're going to put it up here in just a second so you guys can see it. Yeah, okay. here is their um, annotated bibliography, and obviously they have, I'm sure, extensive collections. I haven't searched everything, um, but I have no doubt that the Library of Congress has a lot of World War I material that is probably already digitized as well. Yeah, and all of those digitized items would be great for, especially for small libraries that maybe don't have a local history room in their library or um, you know, have difficulty accessing those first, you know, primary resources. So these are, would be great resources for people to turn to. Oh, look, Connie found their World War One portal for digital content. That's great. We have a couple other people typing. I really want to thank Lauren and Casey and Bethany for being here today. I learned a lot about um, different ideas for things to do as well as all the resources out there. It sounds like this topic, um, you know, there's lots and lots of resources out there, so people should be able to build programs fairly easily. We do have a question. Does the Indianapolis Public Library have digitized World War I posters? I don't know. We're not sure about that one. Yeah, I'm not Jenny. sure. Um, yeah, not that I know of. Bethany's uh, thinking about it. We think Ball State may have digitized World War I posters, so you might check on their website. And Sam, I want to mention that um, Lauren uh, touched on that earlier in the presentation about the display in the rotunda at the State House during the month of April. So that's awesome to um, visit that again. Yeah, and some of the State Library's posters will be in that display. Those are pretty fascinating, I imagine, because, you know, in World War II, there was a huge influx in the printing of posters and things like that, but I imagine it probably started in World War I. Yeah, there was a great deal of posters printed for World War I. They're very different aesthetically than World War II, though. Interesting. It would be really cool to look at those and compare the two. Okay, any other questions or suggestions from anyone? Do you want to go ahead and put your contact information back up, Lauren? Yes. I do one more. Yeah, absolutely. And Casey's going to jump on. Guys, one other thing, um, if you're looking at a potential upcoming event um, in June, um, I don't know the specific date at this point, uh, we will be dedicating a new state historical marker that we're working on that looks at the demise of German language newspapers uh, in the state of Indiana. Um, Throughout World War I, um, especially once the United States gets involved, um, there's a lot of suspicion towards um, German language, culture, um, education in the schools. Uh, and this marker is really going to kind of look at a lot of those aspects um, during the war. So it is one new marker that we're going to be doing uh, this year that definitely touches on that. Um, but again, if you have other ideas, I encourage you to apply for them. And then where will that marker be located? That marker will actually be here in Indianapolis. Um, so it's going to be right in the downtown area. And as we get details going on, um, you know, when the dedication will be and everything, we'll get press releases out so that um, people can come and attend if you'd like and learn more. Well, and that brings me up one other uh, thought, which is, you know, going through the um, marker process is is pretty uh, intense, you know, yes. and there's, there's the application, there's mm -hmm. getting the money and everything. So it would just be ridiculous to have a new marker and not have some sort of dedication ceremony. Exactly, yeah. Do you guys um, attend those regularly when they happen? We do, yeah. We um, have several going on this year. Like I said, this the Demise of German Language Newspapers is really the only one that's World War One related that will be going up in 2017. Sure. Um, but we have a variety of other topics. Um, actually, just went to one last week and have two more next week. So um, they're always happening around the state. And again, you can find information about those through our Facebook page or on our website as well. And what a great thing to celebrate, you know, yeah. the being able to um, share little bits of Indiana history right there out in the public yep. where people can see them. 
Okay, I know Janine has a question in. I think Sam was maybe chat, um, maybe typing to try to answer it. Janine was wondering if the commission will be making items that they can buy or print for publicity. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. Do you know? We don't. Sam may be answering this, but I not that I know of. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we'll have any um, items printed as of right now. We don't really have a budget. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that money side of things is tough sometimes. <laughs> okay, Sam is agreeing with you. Unfortunately, we don't have anything at the moment. Um, logos, he says we can send those out free to use. Um, I think that's a great idea because it's really nice if you're making a bookmark or a flyer for a program or something to be able to have that sort of official look to it is great. So that's really valuable. Should I? One more thing we're going to mention, I'm going to let Lauren address this. Um, the, go Beth, ahead. Bethany brought up a good point is that the images on the Indiana State Library Digital Collections page are free, for, free to download and use for educational use. Um, so that is a resource that you can use along with the committee logos if you choose to use those. So can you just, um, we had some activity in the chat box. Can you just say that again about the um, digital? Did you say we can use those for educational purposes for free? Yes. That's great. So anything that's in that digital archives from the state library? Yes. Okay. I mean, unless it's, you'll see it here in the, the rights copyright notice and use statement. Cool. So I'm assuming we can't like, people wouldn't be able to take one of those and make a giant poster and sell it. No. No. <laughs> but if you're using it for a PowerPoint presentation or some sort of a display maybe in your library, right. that would be appropriate. Yes. Okay, great. Does anyone have any further questions or ideas to share? I really want to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, you do get one LEU for coming to this presentation. I forgot to make it available for you guys here as a download, which is a new thing that we are doing. So um, I will go ahead and email those out to everyone who participated today, as well as a link to the recording of the presentation. And I will go ahead and grab the chat out of the chat box so that we'll have that as well. And Lauren's slide. Any other last thoughts or comments? Great, lots of thank yous. Okay, thank thanks you. everybody. Thank you.